Good morning and welcome to worship with First United Methodist here in Bella Vista. I am Reverend Jean Williams and it is my joy to welcome you here in our worship community this morning. A few things, uh, logistical things that you need for this worship service today. You need your unlit candle and your heart stones. You also will need your type of bread, so bread, cracker, um, I heard somebody say uh, that they used a potato chip because they had forgotten. Um, that's, that's close enough. Um, and then some kind of juice. Of course, we don't anticipate that you um, have a chalice and patent at home. So however you need to um, have your, your bread and your juice ready, that's perfectly fine. Um, then also today, you need a cup full of water all the way to the brim and a bowl to set it in. And with that, I want to also um, give you a few announcements. One is that if you are in need of a fabric mask, we have um, several people who are making those right now and want to be sure that everyone in our congregation who needs one has one. And so if you will let us know in the office or even Judy Ballou, um, let us know and we'll make sure that you receive one of those masks. Another thing is um, to let us know that you are here with us in worship. Please drop a line just saying hello or good morning in the chat or the comment features, depending on which platform you're worshiping with us on. And um, I think that's all of my announcements. Um, as always, as we have more information come to us about when it will be safe to gather again, we will share that with you in all the formats that we are able to um, communicate with you in that. I also wanted to say a word about prayer requests. Um, you may notice that prayer requests um, are a little bit off if you receive our electronic list. And this is because we are pre-recording um, that part of our worship service earlier in the week. So we try to catch up um, each week for the prayer requests that we may have missed in that uh, over that end of that week, but just know that that is our um, plan and our goal. And so you are being prayed for. If you give a prayer request, you will be prayed for and you are being prayed for. So please know that as well. Let us enter into a spirit of worship. We continue with our Easter season because Easter isn't just one day. It is the message of God's desire for us to live fully every day. The early church practiced their hope in this way. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And that comes from Acts 2. We create a temple of worship in our hearts that connects us across boundaries, distance, and time. But as we share this worship, we will stay connected. At the heart of the matter, we are connected through the spirit that makes us one in love. Let us center our hearts as one as we begin our worship in prayer. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation. Help us to take this time to center on you. For you made us, you gave us life, and you continue to be with us every moment, every breath, and every step. Hear now this assurance from God. Be still, O oh heart, you're not alone. Your beat is shared with me. Come now and calm and center here your mind secure and free. Amen. Let us gather into worship our heart stone and let our touch on this surface remind us that God's touch is within us, between us, and around us. As close and as real as this object is in our hands right now, that is how close God's love is to us always. Let us imagine releasing our worries into God's love, into his heart of love. We offer a prayer song of letting go. 
Into your care we offer now our worries, fears, and strife. We turn to you and know you are near, your light, our love, and our life. Amen. Let us light our candles and bring God's Spirit into worship. And as we do this, let us place our heart stone on the altar as our worship continues. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving to First United Methodist Church and its ministries here in Bella Vista. We pray that you will be able to continue to give. And you can do so in several ways. You can visit our website, fumcbellavista.com, and click on the gift tab at the top. You can mail your gift to the church office at 20 Boys Drive, 72715. You can even drop by and slip it under the door. We will get it that way as well. 
We thank you for continuing your support because of your gifts. We as a church are able to continue our support within our community at this time. Let us pray. Lord of overflowing love, you are our guide, our shepherd, the source of all that is good. We give you thanks for the gift of your care for us, a gift that leads to the light of abundant life. We offer back these our gifts with hearts overflowing and pray that they be used to share all that you are and all that you do with this world. It is in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Jesus used the metaphor of a shepherd several times in his ministry. In this passage from the Gospel of John, the sheep know that the shepherd really cares about them and offers what they need. Good, abundant, green pastures to eat in. They recognize this shepherd who takes care of them as they hear his voice. I assure you that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, is a thief and an outlaw. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Whenever he has gathered all of his sheep, he goes before them and they follow him, because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger, but will, but will run away because they don't know the stranger's voice. Those who heard Jesus use this analogy didn't understand what he was saying. So Jesus spoke again, I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life. Indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. John 10, 1 through 10. There are so many ways to live life to the fullest right now, or as another version of the scripture calls it, living life abundantly. Being together, either physically or virtually, is one important way for us in this moment. Perhaps we can keep up some of these connection habits that we have established well beyond this time of isolation. This next scripture is an extended version of our theme scripture for our Easter season series and shows us the value the early Christians, some of whom had to gather in secret and isolation, the value they had in supporting one another abundantly. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching to the community, to their shared meals and to their prayers. A sense of awe came over everyone. God performed many wonders and signs through the apostles. All the believers were united and shared everything. They would sell pieces of property and possessions and distrib distribute the proceeds to everyone who needed them. Every day they met together in the temple and ate in their homes. They shared food with gladness and simplicity. They praised God and demonstrated God's goodness to everyone. The Lord added daily to the community those who were being saved. Acts 2, 42-47 In these two scriptures, we see the desire of God for us to be taken care of, for us to live to the fullest, and for us to support one another in having abundant life and community, food, and gladness. The thief in the first passage could be anything that robs us of those things. Sometimes the sacrifices we have endured because of our attempts to slow this virus can feel as if we've been robbed of our well-being. For instance, ask my brother-in-law who has been furloughed or my sister-in-law who is furloughed, but, but then not furloughed and just demoted into a, a lower paying position. I'm sure they feel robbed. Ask a high school senior if they feel robbed of their senior year and all the celebrations after all their hard work. Robbed. 
we had a couple planning to get married in our sanctuary in the month of April who ended up getting married via Zoom without their friends and family. I bet they feel robbed too. And I'm sure if we all paused for a moment, we could all name how we feel robbed by the sacrifices we've had to make for this virus. You know, in fact, just take a moment and name a way right now, either with your loved ones gathered around you or just silently reflect for a moment. But, there's a but, but we can also turn that around and see that these sacrifices are how we share goodwill and well-being with one another. Our hearts overflow with the grace and guidance we know from the shepherd, and we want that goodness for everyone. Glad and generous hearts overflow with love in so many ways. What ways? Has love been shown to you during this time? What ways have you shown love? I want you to take a moment and to think about those things and share that with your loved ones as well. What ways have you seen glad and generous hearts overflowing with love? Maybe it's uh, while you're taking a walk in your neighborhood and you see sidewalk chalk and a message of hope. Maybe it's a door hanger or a sign that says, thank you, nurses and doctors. Maybe it's receiving kindness from a grocery store clerk because they have put their selves in danger all day to serve you. It's a glad and generous heart. What other ways? Our theme scripture says they ate their food with glad and generous hearts. One way we can be glad and generous is to share about how we are finding strength, hope, love, and peace in these days. This is part of breaking bread with each other as we break open our hearts to one another as well. In this week's scripture, Jesus talks about listening to the shepherd, not to the things that rob us of our well-being. Who or what have you found to be a voice of the shepherd? giving you a sense of well-being and abundance in this time. What things are thieves threatening to rob you of a sense of calm and trust? Or if you can't think of something from this week, what do you have in your memory as something that offers abundance? I invite you to take a moment and reflect on these questions. Hi friends, it's me, Miss Ashton, coming at you live in my pajamas for Pajama Church. Did you know that the early believers of the church were very good at sharing? I'm talking they would sell all they had and give the money to the poor. They would open up their homes and invite people in to feed them and shelter them. They were so, so good at sharing. How many of us are good at sharing? Now, I can't, I don't know who's raising their hand, but I know that your parents are keeping you accountable. No lying. <laughs> Jesus is really good at sharing too. In fact, he shares his love with us every single day. Do you guys remember the heart stone that I just dropped that we used in last week's sermon? Our little Christ heart love stone. We're going to use that today. And a bowl. And a towel. So join me in this visual of Jesus' love. Our verse for this sermon series comes from Acts chapter 2, 
and it says that day by day the early believers attended temple together, broke bread in their homes, received food with glad hearts, and praised God for having favor with all the people. And the Lord blessed them and added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. Jesus' love poured out for his early believers, just like our love rock will make our water overflow. Bye, friends. I won't see you next week, but you will see me. And in the meantime, try to share the love of Christ with those around you. Try thinking of three ways that you can share Jesus' love with your classmates online, with your moms and dads at home, or maybe with your neighbors across the street while social distancing. Don't forget your love rocks. Friends, as we continue to be in isolation, it is difficult when we cannot be near some of the people we love and might be worried about this day. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to take a moment to bring those people to mind, to say their names out loud, to even type their names in the chat or the comment section there on the page. These are the people that you wish were right there next to you at your table today. As we name them together and lift them in prayer, they are present with us in our hearts. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you are with us in joys and in struggles. 
We thank you for joys, for the joy of new life, and we lift up Caroline Elise Kasabian. She is the first great-granddaughter of Wayne and Joanne Hubbard. She was born on April 10th at College Station, Texas. Thank you, Lord, for Caroline. We thank you for birthdays and the celebrations that go with those. We know that in this time of isolation, sometimes we have to celebrate across the miles. But let us feel your love even as we reach out by phone or by video. Lord, we lift up Reverend Jean's mother, who is in Tennessee, and but is having a special birthday this coming Wednesday. Thank you for that celebration. We lift up Kenneth's grandmother, who had a birthday this past Sunday. Thank you for her celebration. Lord, we know that there are those who need our prayers and wish we wish to lift in prayer, whose names we do not know. And today, we lift the EMTs and policemen, firemen, and others who respond to emergencies, that they may feel your strength and your comfort at this time. We lift up those who have lost loved ones, Doris Rasco in the loss of her husband, and Max Jackson in the loss of his wife. We lift up those who are sick and recovering, who may be facing treatments or procedures, who have gone through treatments or procedures. And we lift up Jean Justice, Neil Goodell, Don McMahon, Riley Duckworth, Mary Louise, those and all those who are facing cancer treatments, Wanda Williams, who has broken her arm. Lord, please give you the blessing of your healing touch on each of these. Lord, we lift up those who feel isolated and alone. Especially today, we lift up those who can no longer drive but must wait for others to visit or to, to come see them in any way, shape, or form, or to help in any way, shape, or form. Lord, we ask for your blessings on them. Lord, we lift up those who are helping and are so very tired, caregivers of the elderly and those who have dementia. Give them strength and courage and guidance in this time. Lord, we lift up those who are afraid for their health and are in need of friends and food and comfort. And we especially lift up those who have lost jobs and those who are vulnerable because of underlying health conditions in this time of COVID-19. Lord, we ask that you hear all of these prayers and that you touch our hearts, help us to feel your presence, all these to feel your presence, that together our voices and our spirits can join in the prayer which you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day your daily bread. And please forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Wasn't that a lot of fun? Oh my goodness. I hope you feel some good vibes right now. So while we have our energy up, let's decide to send some energy out to the world, the world that so desperately needs it. What message does the world need? Perhaps you will decide to create a way to let more and more people know the message of Christ. The message that you are not alone. I am here. My love is overflowing for you. What can we do to create more well-being in our household, in our family, in our relationships with those we cannot be with right now? How can we offer abundance to those who are working so hard right now? How can we offer abundance to those who are feeling short on calm right now? Maybe within our home, we can say that extra, I love you. You are so special. Maybe if it's someone we can't be with, we can make a phone call of encouragement or send a card with a handwritten note or drive by and leave a present anonymously on the front step. Let's get started to make our own plans today to share the energy with the rest of the world. My friends, as we close this time together, remember, God is always with you. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right there beside you, offering love straight from God's heart, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fears and your worries and know that those feelings are as true and holy as any feeling, including joy and hope and love. Take heart for this is the heart of the matter. Go in peace. Amen.